On the screen, you can on the TV. It's already on, right? It's on, right? Yes. In the green, ah, yeah, yeah. Tell me on that. Can you come for this? Okay, class. So, which experiment we done? Six and seven. Eh? Six first. Uh, yeah, six and seven. Five. Do you have any problem? We go to five. Yeah. We go to five first. Okay, uh, question five, uh, the last week you done uh, the equilibrium suspended mass. So be able to set up just uh, theta and F. Okay, what we're going to check is the, how many decimals? How many decimal right for the theta? Theta should be how much? Theta is what? Theta is the protector. Actually, it's a, a smaller scale is how much? One degrees, right? One degree. So, so decimal place here, no decimal place. Eh? Uh, no decimal place. Eh? No dp. Eh? So that means if you get 30 degrees, means just 30 degrees. Okay. Yeah, because two places are uncertain. Okay. Because so you place your place your protect. Place a protector here. Okay. So I think here and maybe the angle here, two places answered. So half, half become one complete decimal place. Eh? So one decimal place. Your force, your force Newton meter. Ah, uh, yeah. Newton meter that day you check. What is the smallest scale? 0 0.1. The smallest scale is 0 0.1. So you have to go for half of the smallest scale, right? Because it's analog. Okay, so 0 0.05, okay. Smaller scale, so smaller scale, small scale is uh, 0 0.1. So you must go for half of the smaller scale. Eh? Scale, so it should be how much? 0 0.05. So the reading here must be how many dp? 2 dp. Eh? Whatever force you wrote must be 2 dp. 5 Newton, you must write 5.00, 2 dp, half of the smaller scale. Eh? Smaller scale is 0 0.1, right? Eh? The day Newton meter. So half of the smaller scale, because it's analog. Eh? Analog must go half of the smaller scale. OK, next, percentage uncertainty. Percentage uncertainty, of course, changes of theta over theta times 100%. Okay. So yeah, uh, expected one or two significant figure, eh? one or two significant figure. Uh, because the error changes of theta is already one SF, this is your one SF already. So the one SF going to limit the final answer. What? Final answer going to go for the least significant among the data used. The changes of theta is only one SF. So final answer must be one, one or two SF, okay? 
So if you write error percentage 2.37%, uh, this is considered wrong. You suppose write 2.4% or you can write 2%, uh, except. Okay. So the list percentage uncertainty always one or two F7. Uh. Okay, that is what should be in your data. Okay, next. Still two difficulties that you have when making measurement F and theta. So what's the problem you face? Anyone? Uh, to make the string perfectly horizontal. Yeah. Difficult to, to fix the string perfectly horizontal to the table. Okay, that's one problem. How do you overcome? Horizontal. You can use a ruler. You can use a ruler. Measure the vertical height of the ruler from the table at both sides of the string. Make sure the vertical height is the same. Okay. Use a ruler. Measure the vertical height at both edge of the string to make the ruler perfectly horizontal. Okay, use a ruler. Use a ruler to measure the vertical height of the string from the table at both edge. Any other problem you face? Because they want problem, they want how do you overcome? Real examination, they will ask for for problem for how to overcome. Another one? Uh, yeah, that's one problem. Huh? Okay. Uh, the Newton meter. A reading exceeds the scale of the Newton meter. Okay. So how do you overcome that? Oh, the mass to be reduced, but the mass is given to you. So, so what you can say, use the Newton meter, which has a greater range. Use the Newton meter, which has a greater range. Okay, another one problem, I think maybe your parallax error when reading the angle, uh, parallax error. Uh, the parallax error when measuring the uh, angle. Okay, or you can see, uh, difficult to locate the string when using the protractor. So how do you overcome? Have a background, have, have a cutboard at the back, have a Cut a black cut pot at the back of the string when measuring the angle. So that better contrast. Uh, so please uh, a black cut pot at the back of the string when measuring the angle. Okay, so your table, the day I draw for you, so your table is fine. Then uh, to plot the graph F versus one over sine theta, determine the gradient and the y-intercept. So after you get your gradient and y-intercept, you find the, finally, yeah, find the load M. Yeah, so this is the equation given. So how do you find the, Gradient equals to what? The gradient should be equals to, the gradient of the graph should be equals to what? On the graph here, y equals to 
m x plus c right so m is what 1 over sin theta right so gradient should be what gradient should be mg right so your linear law eh? so this statement you must have gradient is 1 equals to mg one mark statement eh? interpretation and uh, the y intercept y intercept is equals to c this could be one mark okay you always must tell this eh? what gradient represents what from the equation y intercept what from the equation that carries mark cambridge keep points for that uh, now you can find your mass your mass is of course gradient your gradient uh, divided by your gravity eh? which is uh, gravity is 9.81 so get your mass in terms of, uh, uh, I don't know what your gradient you use, force and force versus sine theta. Force is in Newton. Therefore, uh, this should be kilogram. kilogram. Eh? So how, how much of mass you slotted at the bottom at that day? You still remember? How many slotted mass you place? 100 gram? The, the mass hanger and one slotted mass, is it? The mass hanger is 50 gram. Put one certain mass, another 50 gram. How many certain mass you use? One. So it's 100 gram. Eh? So your final answer must get uh, 0 0.1 kilogram. Eh? You must get 0 0.1 kilogram here. Uh, plus minus 10 percent, then you get the accuracy. That means 0. Uh, 0 0.09 to 0 0.11. Okay, you get mark for the accuracy mark. If you never go plus minus 10 percent, you lose on mark. For the accuracy. Okay, your y intercept after you give statement, your your k your k right sorry your k eh? your k is equals to your y intercept value must put unit eh? unit one mark. What is unit for k? K is y intercept one, so must be Newton now, eh? right? Uh, your y axis is f one. Uh, so f is Newton, so intercept should be Newton too. So must be Newton. So this Newton one mark, the unit. And all the final answers, all the final answers after your graph, go for three significant figure. All go for three significant figure. Uh, you won't get wrong. After the graph, all go for three significant figure. Your final answers. Okay, those who wrote gradient is mg, y intercept k, you get two mark. Then your final answer within the 10% range, you get one mark. The k, you wrote Newton, the unit, like one mark. The all the answers in 3SF could be one mark. Okay, this is where the marks lie for. Eh? Y intercept, oh yeah, Y intercept. Okay, that's another one thing. Yeah, uh, the Y intercept, right? The Y intercept, you have two ways to calculate. Uh, y intercept, two ways to calculate. One way, the first, 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 first method. Okay, the first method. Uh, what you can do, you read from the from the graph. But this only correct. Someone, you see, he cuts here. So this is your Y intercept. But don't forget. Your x axis, right? Your x must start from zero. Your x never start from zero, then it's a false origin. That's not your y intercept, right? But I think, I believe many of you never start from zero, zero, right? You start other numbers. Okay. So, therefore, how do you find y intercept? The second method, now. second method, you substitute one coordinate. You know, y equals to mx plus c. You want to find the c. Can you get one coordinate, x and y? You substitute. Gradient, you already know why. You already calculated your gradient. So you can find your C from here. I think the method two is the best method lah, compared to first method. Method two. Eh? Method two. Use the method two always. Get one coordinate from the from the graph. Eh? Okay, you see your graph is like this means eh? let's say one you have six coordinates here. Don't take this coordinate, you know, the coordinate which is not on, fall on the line. You must take a fresh coordinate from the line, eh, from the line. 
uh, that coordinate is the one you need to substitute here. Okay, fresh coordinate. Yeah. If if the coordinate is fall on the line, the coordinate is fall on the line, and that coordinate can be used. And if the coordinate is out of the line, that that coordinate you cannot use. Okay. Okay. So yeah, this is the force experiment. Okay. Okay. Next, yesterday's experiment, resistivity. So rho L O A. So this is the circuit you fix. So assume assume diameter of the wire. Okay, this is in mm. What how many dp you write? What instrument do you use? Use micrometer square gauge. So micrometer square gauge is 0.01 mm, right? Uh, so this should be 2 dp, must be 2 dp. Whatever reading you wrote here is 2 dp. 1.5 mm, you get means you must write 1.50. Uh, yes, good. Here, advisable, you draw a box. Draw a box, repeat the data. Sorry, draw a box maybe. So the diameter, eh? so diameter in mm. One, two, average. So take your average repetition will give you one mark. Because it's experiment one. All raw data have to repeat. Here they never mention you to repeat, but you repeat it. You must show repeat it. In the mark scheme, they will have mark scheme. They will put so the student repeat the evidence of repetition. One mark. So you repeat eh? all raw data you repeat. So if they know you just put a one, two average, then you get there. Show the reputation. Yeah. Uh, you don't have time to draw a nice box also is fine, but they say evidence of repetition. Means you put roughly one, two average, uh, so you get mark. Okay. Okay, next uh, cross-sectional area, of course, use pi r squared or pi d over two squared get your mark on, right? The mm squared. Uh, so you go for the least significant. Check the T, how many significant. I think you can go for three significant bigger. Right? Actually, the rule is the least significant. What is your diameter significant bigger? If you go 1.50, uh, it's going to be three as well. Okay. How much the diameter got, anyone? Oh, you got zero point? 0.24. Eh? If you got 0.24 the diameter, then the cross sectional area must be how much? Two significant figure or one extra allowed. Three SF still will be there. Eh? So I don't think so. You'll get wrong if you put three SF. But the best answer, of course, two SF. Eh? The least of the time, uh, significant use in the data. Eh? So two or three SF. Next, set the power supply, move the sliding, so find the PD and current. Okay, got the PD and current. Repeat the five step to get the six. I already show you the table. Okay, in the real exam, you must know how to draw the table, but maybe the next next practical, eh? leave it to you, you must draw your table. Eh? Okay, table, as I said, when you draw a table, First column always go for what? Always go for the uh, the one manipulated. Okay, always for the manipulated. So second should be the the responding. Okay, or the dependent. The responding must what? Must repeat. Okay. Then after that, all going to be your uh, whatever calculated data. Eh? After that, you calculated data. Okay. So manipulated to responding is what? Your uh, raw data, so raw data follow what? Decimal places, uh, decimal places of the instrument. And after that, 
all your calculated data follow what follow significant figure uh, significant figure of what significant figure of the source from where you get the calculated okay let's say calculated you got a over b is your calculated this is your a this is your b uh, a found to be uh, three significant figure b found to be two significant figure so a over b must be how many significant figure two significant figure to be right uh, the least among the data i used okay so this is the table rule okay and uh, always never fail without fail uh, cambridge always need six sets of data uh, you want to go more can you go less you lose more uh, go more more time consuming uh, more if you have time you can go for more uh, but whatever it is one anomalous is allowed only one anomalous uh, Okay, so you plot R versus L. So hope your graph is uh, R versus L is a straight line. It's a straight line. Uh, should pass through zero if if you start with zero zero. I don't think so. Any of you start with zero zero? Do you start with zero zero? Okay, if you never start from zero zero, uh, may, might get uh, going like this, going up or going down. But it should be a straight line. Eh? Should be a straight line. Okay, get the gradient and determine the resistivity of the wire. Okay, I told you how much the value that day. I think you can check from the net also the resistivity of the constant. How much the constant resistivity? Check from the net. What do you got? Resistivity of constant wire. Four point something times ten power of negative eight, right? How much negative eight? You get negative eight to answer. Constant ten wire. How much you get? Negative eight. Ten power of anyone? Resistivity of the constant ten wire. Negative eight. Eh? I think around negative. I already got five. Practical. Four point nine times ten power of forty nine. Oh, just ten. So forty-nine now. Oh, your unit, maybe your unit, any unit problem. Your gradient is your resistivity, right? Oh, yeah, your, your gradient is what from the graph? What your gradient represents? Because oh, R equals to what? Oh, L over A, right? Uh, so Y equals to M X. So your gradient is what? Gradient is rho A. Eh? So gradient is rho A. So therefore, the rho should be the gradient times the area. And you get your, uh, what do you call, resistivity. But your gradient, what do you need? Gradient here, ohm. Do you length use meter or centimeter? If you use centimeter, then uh, after you get this answer, you have to convert to meter. So, so those who put centimeter, I think your answer is going to be slightly different. So if you put centimeter here, the area uh, area was diameter was in millimeter. So I don't know whether you change millimeter to meter or not. If you never change millimeter to meter, then this will be in millimeter. This will be in uh, what? Ohm per centimeter. You know? So before you multiply, I think convert them to the uh, SI. So gradient or gradient is ohm per centimeter. Uh, what do you do? Times 100 or divide by 100, gradient only. Over centimeter, over centimeter, centimeter divided by, so times. So this is times, the gradient must times with, times with 100. Okay, whatever gradient you got times with 100, then the unit will be ohm per meter. Then area, area millimeter squared, how do you change to meter squared? Whatever area you got, millimeter squared, you change to meter squared, how do you change to meter squared? Times 10 power of negative six. 
right? 10 power negative 6. So area, you just times 10 power negative 6. OK, you get meter squared already. So 10 power negative 6, you need to times with the area. The gradient must times with 100. Then both value you times. You should get 10 power of negative 8. Get 10 power of negative 8, the power. Then you get the answer. You get the mark. Conversion. The final answer is, uh, yeah, final unit is what? Ohmeter. Uh, you get ohmeter. Huh? So you need one mark. Uh, the value, the value, 10 power negative 8 must be there. Okay, 10 power negative 7, negative 9 might be considered. Negative 6 wrong. Negative, negative 6 onwards is, I think, wrong. Negative 9, more than negative 9, I think, should be wrong. Negative 10 is wrong. Should get negative 10. Sended, not, uh, sended form, eh? Okay, so this value must be one decimal place. Uh, sorry, not after one digit. The value here must be standard form is this value must be what? From zero to zero to 10, right? This value, uh, uh, sorry, not including 10. Uh, yeah, zero can, but not excluding 10. Uh, must get 10 power negative eight. Anyone got 10 power negative 8? Negative 7, eh? Or negative 7, okay. One, one low, one high is fine. Still in the range. Negative 7, negative 9, okay. Other than that, those any, anyone get other than that, I think you lose the last mark. The problem is the, the massive conversion in between. Eh? We have to be very careful. Conversion not only affect practical, it affect all the papers in physics. Yeah, every question, there'll be a conversion. So you must be very good in converting millimeter to meter, millimeter squared to meter squared, and so on. Okay, so let's we move on. So that's your gradient and uh, resistivity, uh, final resistivity. Resistivity, uh, Gradient, just get the gradient. The one I explained just now is for the resistivity. Okay, first statement, what, what you must say? The gradient is equals to what? The first statement, gradient is equals to a row over A. You must say this. This is one more. Then show the calculation. Then you should get 10 power negative A here. Plus minus 10%. Okay. Okay. giving me problem. Stuck. Okay, what is the next question? 3 m Oh, the next experiment. Yeah. Okay. Can I scroll down? I think I have to restart. Okay, uh, let me write here uh, for the experiment seven. Uh, so. Okay. Okay, so let me write here whatever necessary. Uh, so. Give me one minute, eh? let me check from this email.
Okay, so experiment seven, eh? So experiment seven, you have the first, you have the, I hope you fix the circuit. So first record all your set of RV and I, the day I show you the, the table. Determine the gradient of the y-intercept of your graph. Okay, now next. Eh? Then measure the internal energy of the uh, internal resistance of the battery. Okay, so I hope you got the graph like what? Graph, graph of uh, plot V versus I. So your expected graph must be a straight line with the negative gradient. Eh? So your EMF equals to what? Your terminal voltage plus the I small r. So therefore, we rearrange V negative I R plus E. Eh? So Y equals to MX plus C. So from here, your intercept must be your E. The intercept is your EMF. And the gradient going to be your, gradient going to be what? Gradient going to be your, your negative R. Eh? Your gradient is negative R. Internal resistance, right? Eh? Interpretation. I think that's what written in your uh, practical book, right? Are they put as, are they put as negative gradient, eh? right? Actually rearranging this, uh, negative bring the other side. And the y-intercept is EMF, okay. Use your answer in one to determine the internal resistance and the EMF of the battery. Okay, internal resistance is actually the negative of your gradient, negative of whatever gradient you got. But gradient check, is it unit is correct? This is all the current is it milliampere? Ampere. Oh, if it's ampere, then good. We just gives you whatever gradient is your ohm. Eh? How many ohm you got? 7.125, so 7.13. Eh? Quite big. Uh, okay. So they will, Cambridge will give a range. Okay, will give a range. You need to follow the range. Sometimes they won't give range. Sometimes any value they accept. Okay, uh, maybe out of 100%, maybe 30%, they never give value. Okay, 70%, they give range. How much they want? Like gravity, all they give range now. Huh? Okay, so your luck, you have to check the marks. Okay, so 7.13. Next, what do you get? After that, uh, determine the internal resistance and the EMF of the battery. EMF, what do you got? EMF, you have to minus five, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, no need to minus five here. So your EMF, of course, is your Y-intercept, eh? Y-intercept. So what do you got? 0 0.23 volt. 0 0.23 volt. Cannot be, should be more than five. Anyone got more than five? One point six two. Okay, that day you did that experiment. Eh? The you have the dry cell. Do you put the five ohm resistor there? Put the five ohm resistor. Okay, you put the. So you did. Put the 5 ohm resistor. Put 5 ohm resistor theoretically. Eh? You're finding this voltage, this is your external load. Okay, the wire resistance external load. The internal resistance actually, whatever resistance outside the voltmeter is considered as internal resistance. In this case, the internal resistance is what? The actual internal resistance plus the 5 ohm. It's internal resistance. You got 0 0.23 volt, eh? Very small. Okay. So 3.06 and eh? yeah, sorry, sorry, not not more than five. 3.06 volt. 3.06 volt, eh? For EMF. Okay, okay, let's we see that. Okay, so internal resistance of the battery calculated. 
above include the resistance of 5 ohm, what is the actual internal resistance of the battery? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, sorry, I made a mistake. Yes, this you get around uh, two batteries what you used, two batteries, one battery is 1.5 volt. So you should get around, around three volt, around three volt, maybe sometimes the battery is old, maybe two, uh, 2.4 volt, maybe. If you got 0 0.23, I think something wrong with the testing mode. You should get 2.3. Okay, so around 3 volt, around 3 volt. Maybe uh, 2. Point, I don't know, the battery used in the lab is, I think, a little older. Maybe 2.5 volt to sometimes it can be higher. If it's a very new battery, it can go a little higher, maybe 3.2 volt, maybe this range. Okay. Anything out of this range, consider you lose your mark uh, for the accuracy. So then the third, they're asking what is the actual internal resistance? What is the actual internal resistance? Let's say here you got negative 7.13 means the 7.13 ohm is equals to what? Actual internal resistance plus 5 ohm. Because, because we place a 5 ohm here. So your actual internal resistance is 7.13 minus 5 ohm. 2.13 ohm is your internal resistance for this case, for this data. Whatever gradient you got, 7.13, let's say, minus 5, that's your actual internal resistance. Uh, because we put a 5 ohm here. The internal resistance plus the 5 ohm is the, the resistance you get here. So it should be 2.13 like those who have got data 7.13. Yeah. Okay, so you, your gradient you get, let's say nine, nine ohm, then your internal resistance actually, the nine ohm is actually what? Actual R plus five ohm, la, that's your nine ohm. So internal resistance actually like nine minus five, la, so four ohm. Okay. Okay, so any other questions I'd like to ask? After that is graph. Uh -huh. uh, after you draw the graph, you got this information. After that, is there any questions? No questions, right? You have questions, sir? After that. After that, got any questions? Let's sit there. Uh -huh. Okay, when you come to graph, graph, Always four marks, okay? The first mark is your V current I, the labeling, uh, labeling with the, the triangle is like one mark long. Eh? The one mark goes for your scale, eh? as I said, scale, eh? multiple of, multiple of even number, of multiple even number allowed, uh, odd number, number, uh, multiple of five uh, allowed. Uh, other than that, be careful. The prime numbers all don't use long. Uh, multiple of seven, multiple of three, three is worse. Cannot, uh, go for even numbers can. So yeah, that's your scale. Uh, whatever scale you use here, your point must be Spread at least half. I told you this many times. Get a scale mark. One mark. Second, all six points are transferred correctly. Points are uh, plotted correctly. Uh, plotted correctly. Yeah. Plotted correctly. Correctly. Uh, you get one mark. Yeah. One mark. Then the third is your. But the third one is a best field line. Yeah. Your best field line. Get one mark. Okay. Okay. Let's feel line. Let's feel line six points transferred. The fourth is the the triangle. 
the triangle you make, which point do you use to make to find the gradient? Eh? Uh, that's the fourth mark. Gradient. Okay. Uh, the triangle must be the triangle must be at least how much half of the line size. Okay. That you get one mark. This is four marks if important. You draw graph. Okay. okay, any other questions about graph or practical? Practical, the same thing. Make sure you have significant decimal all correct. Uh, you should be able to get at least B grade. To get A, qualitative questions you must answer. How to, the limitation and how to overcome. That's the trick part. What are the problem you face? How are you going to overcome? Okay. In this experiment, uh, resistive, resistive, what are the problem you face? <laughs> a lot of problem. <laughs> the problem normally you face is the fluctuation of the reading. Fluctuation of the reading. First time you connect, it shows some reading, maybe two volt. After you connect again, you give 1.8 volt. Fluctuation, current also the same thing, fluctuation. Uh, problem is if you prolong connecting, the heating going to change the resistance of the circuit. So all the reading going to change. So, you just on when you take the reading, then you off. On when you take the reading. When you write pencil, you're thinking, they just off the circuit first. If you prolong connecting, resistance is going to change. So you're going to change the, vol the voltage and the current. So you do first time current is there, next time you do current changing because you keep on connecting the wires for a long time. So heating happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. We stop here. Eh? So today's lesson just about graph. So tomorrow we go back to a new topic, eh? nuclear.